I've been reading some of the comments on my channel and I noticed some people had questions and wanted to know the difference between builder gels and hybrid gels, known as poly gels. They both can be absolutely beautiful, but there are some differences. Let me break it down. So let's start with the differences. Well, and there's a lot of similarities too. So I'm gonna start both of them. Similarities would be, I've got two nails prepared here. I'm gonna cleanse each nail. Okay, I'll put my glasses on too. Okay, so right out of the gate, we're gonna do a formed nail today. So each of them require a form. I've got hybrid on this side and the builder gel on this side. So the forms will be the same. My nails are prepped exactly the same as in I have filed them with a 180 grit file, very gently removed the dust, and now I'm gonna form them both. How you form it is exactly how it's going to look in the end. So forming is very, very important. Forming can be so personal that if I had 10 different people, one person forming each one of my fingers, I could have 10 very different looking nails just depends on how they were formed. It's a style. There is definitely a style in forming. So they both require a form or a tip, whatever you do in there. And you could certainly do either one of these applications over a tip. Okay. Okay, now once you get them nice and formed, you can see they're both formed exactly the same way. I'm going to get me trusty little tube here, my little balancing tube. And right from the beginning, and I'll show you the difference. This is the hybrid side, remember? And this, oopsie, would be, this is an example of a hybrid brush. This is an example of a gel brush. So one difference I will tell you is the bristles on the hybrid gel, if you just watch my fingers, I'm trying to push it through, they're quite a bit stiffer, they're stronger, they're usually shorter and a little bit um, stiffer in the sense that you can't move them as easily. And that is good because you really want to have the strength to pat down that hybrid gel. If you look at the gel brush, it's much more gentle. It, it flows back and forth. It's a little longer. That's so you can get a nice sway to it. Building gel is very um, soft and it has a more gentle viscosity, so it's easier to flow and play with, okay? So you want a nice flowy brush. And the longer bristles will help for that floating method you go across the nail. Okay, so we don't get confused. This nail here we're gonna do for the hybrid nail. And this nail, closer to this side of the table, will be the builder gel, okay? I'll put the flaps down on this one is the builder gel and the one sticking up will be the hybrid gel. So we don't get confused. Sometimes if you go back and forth with the camera, you might not know which finger we're actually looking at if you don't have context of the full screen. So this will be a base coat for the hybrid. That's just this base coat they have in this bottle. Most companies, as in gel and hybrid gels, will require a base. And this one happens to be in a bottle probably just for ease of application. Wherever I put this on is where the gel is going to stick to. So I'm just gonna put a nice coat on there. And the builder gel is a clear base in a pot. It's called a potted gel. We're just gonna pick that up and I'm just gonna gently Paint a nice thin layer on my natural nail here. And truth be told, there might be a little bit of remnants of product on there simply because I don't tend to file it all off. I don't like to go down to my natural nail too much. I don't want to make it too thin. I'll just move this and I'm just going to nuke it. And each company will have their own little times that you can nuke and you just read what they expect for you for nuking times and just give it a nuke. It's usually between 30 to 60 seconds with an LED and up to two minutes with a UV. You don't want the UV light to get on your potted gel. <laughs> Okay, 
Beauty. So now we've got the base coat down. So now I'm going to grab, and that's the difference with the hybrid. Hybrid gels, often the brushes will have a little spatula in the other end. Very handy. And you wanna scoop off approximately what you feel you're going to need. Now I will say the wonderful thing about hybrid and builder gels is time is kind of standing still. It's on your side. With acrylic, which is a whole other way of doing nails, there is a uh, amount of time you have to build it in because when you do the liquid to powder together, it starts curing up right away. This stuff just waits for you. See, look at us. We're just chit-chatting. This isn't bothered at all. It's not drying, it's not curing, nothing. And you just gently put it on. Oopsie, where's that brush? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Might have to cut that out. Okay, so now with the hybrid gel, you need either a monomer or you can simply dip the brush in alcohol. That will be your liquid to move this around. It actually works brilliantly. So see, this is why you need a little stronger bristle. See, I'm gonna push that down. Now this little bristle here, you could do it. But see how that, it doesn't move it as much. I really do need the strength of this shorter, stronger bristle. A little glitter just appeared, see that? So if it starts to stick, you need more alcohol. Okay, so now you're just, you're just shaping. Now with the cuticle, just a few little tips if you're working with the hybrid gel. You wanna flatten it as thin as you can near the cuticle. Just get it nice and thin. It's a lot of pushing motion. If you've got a lot of alcohol on there, you can do more of a smoothing and wiping. That's more after you finish pushing where you want it to be. But again, it is not curing, so you are at liberty to just take your time, shape it the way you want. If it gets a little sticky and harder to shape and manipulate it, just dip it in the alcohol again. Alcohol is evaporating fast, so that's why you have to re-dip. And it's not going to harden on you, like acrylic will harden as you go, but this doesn't. That's the advantage of the hybrid gels. It's easier to work with than a builder gel, and you'll see why in a minute. And that is subjective, depending on what you're used to, right? But if you've never worked product, this is easier out of all the products. I think this is actually quite brilliant for learning. Obviously that's gotten a little bit long. And you can see how much of a bead that I grabbed. I really only needed about three quarters of that bead. I actually grabbed a little too much. So I can look at it. The arch isn't quite as happy as I like it to be. So I'm going to take advantage. Now I could nuke it and just add on top, but I, like I said, I did notice it's too long. So I'm just gonna back it all up, right? Just gonna push all that up there. Why waste it? By filing it all off, I might as well Put it where I want it now. That's the beauty of this stuff. You could literally get so good at this, you make it so good, you barely need any filing whatsoever. Yeah, see, if I push it back up there, I get a nice arch. Now, unlike gel, you can't hold it upside down because it's not going to move. It's not gonna do nothing. It's gonna stay like that. It only goes where you push it around to be. So you can push it exactly the shape that you want it to be in. Now the reason why they're calling it a hybrid gel, that is the general name. Polygel is actually a brand name. It's marketed as a combination of acrylic and gel put together. And the reason why it's like an acrylic is because of how it feels when you're molding it, okay? 
And the reason why it's a, like a gel is because you have to nuke it into the light to cure it. And that's how it gets its hybrid attitude. Look at that. You could probably nuke it and add a little in the arch. It's pretty good. But I am seeing that glitter. I can't seem to get away from that glitter. Let's see if I can get it out of there. Okay, I think I got rid of it now. There you go. Now because that's not going to go anywhere, I'm going to I'm going to build on the gel nail and show you how that's built and then I can nuke this because it's not going to move. I'll nuke them at the same time. I could play with this all day to make it perfect, but I'm just going to I'm going to move on because I want to show the other one. Okay, now let's move on to the Builder Gel. Okay, now as we move on to the Builder Gel, again a potted gel, I'm going to use my uh, floating kind of brush and I'm going to dip into the pink color. We've got the base down, and now we're going to use the pink. I'm going to grab a generous amount, and we're going to bring it onto the nail. Now Builder Gel, is a little bit different. It has a bit of a, a runnier viscosity. And we're going to manipulate it. And we're going to float it, pillow it near the cuticle. And we're going to build it down as we go toward the end, just to get that beautiful, consistent color. We're going to do almond. We're going to do it to shape and match the other nails. Going to get a little bit more. I really love that pink color. And every company will have its own you know, shades and tones and hues of different colors. Now, if you let gel sit long enough, the builder gel, it will flow everywhere into the cuticles and such. In fact, it's moving a little bit now, so I'm going to make sure it's not falling in there too hard, and I'm going to nuke it and hold it in its place. And then we can continue to build on that. So I'm nuking the hybrid gel at the same time. Okay, so I've got a bit of a nuke on there. Now I'm going to continue building with my builder gel. That's one thing about the hybrid gel. Because it's thicker, you can build it a lot quicker. Now this one I'm going to add a little bit more and I'm going to start to shape it and build my arch in there. Remember I was saying about the builder gels? You can hold it upside down and it gets a nice flow and I can almost build an arch for you. Right? Oh yeah, that's beautiful. That's, that's really pretty. So I'm just going to give that a quick flash cure and I'm going to continue building out. So I will say, when you're building nails on yourself, I'm doing it for the camera, so I'm leaning back this way. It tends to flow into my cuticles, which can be very frustrating. But when you're working on it yourself, work with it like this and lean your finger toward you so naturally the flow of product will come this way, okay? Especially when you're working with gel. Okay, so that's looking rather lovely. I'm just going to clean my brush. You can just clean it with alcohol and a pad. And I'm going to just put a builder gel, a layer of clear, this is a builder clear. Now 
And I've got the color pink in there, and that's where you can really custom design. And I'm putting a builder gel, very strong builder gel on top, just to encase that pink. Very pretty. Yeah, gorgeous. And I'll hold it upside down, tiny little bit there. And make sure you're level with, if you have it back level this way, it's going to get really bumpy near the cuticle. If you have it leaning too much this way, it's going to get bumpy right near the tip. You're going to also do this, which I think is a really cool technique. That to me is awesome. I love that. So I'm sorry that's a little bit harder to see. You can only see it with the front camera. Front camera doesn't get that close, but it gives a nice arch. Okay, give it a nice little nuke. And then we can start filing the head. Protect my gel. So now we've built them both. We've nuked them both. Now we're just going to remove that top coat. There's a dispersion layer. You want to remove both off of the hybrid gel and, and off the builder gel as well. So you can see, besides the colors are a little bit different, but you know, color is just a, a choice and some companies have different colors to choose from. So that's not a big deal, but they both perform perfectly. We're able to build that gel and now we're gonna file them and you would file them basically the same way as well. And what I do when I'm filing is I score the edges of my file first and I make sure that when I'm filing, no matter what I'm filing, whether it's a tip, acrylic, hybrid, or gel nails, I always determine my shape first. So I will file the sides first. I'll go like that. And I will determine the length. So in this case, this is a bit long, so I'm just gonna shorten that right down. And I can feel that right now. It feels very solid. It's cured completely. It's, uh, it's a solid nail, and I've worn hybrid nails. I've done them on videos and worn them for weeks at a time. I found them quite strong. And, it, you know, keep in mind, it has a lot to do with how you build it. Structure of a nail is everything. doesn't matter what you have used. If you use this really great, strong product, but you have poor structure, it's probably going to break. If you use a not-so-great product, but you have really great structure, it might not break. But if you have a great product and great structure, you have a nail that could last, you know, four to, I've had clients up to eight, nine weeks. Even though their, their nails are growing, it's just the structure. I would don't recommend that. But some clients can squeak that out. So when I'm saying four to eight weeks, that is the time that they can go between when they get their nails, either a new set or a nail fill, they can go, usually the standard is four weeks between the next fill. And the only reason why we get a nail fill is because when that a fake product is sitting top of the natural nail, the natural nail continues to grow and it grows with the fake nail sitting on top. So it grows together, they just move together. And then it leaves that big gap between the cuticle and the edge where you put the nail, the nail technician is, when it grows away, it's one week, two week, three week, four week. And as it grows out, you need to fill it because structurally it's now off balance. So that's what a nail fill is, okay? Okay, so I am just gonna go ahead like I would with any nail. They shape up and file up exactly the same. Gel and hybrids are very soft in the sense that they're easier to file. Acry acrylic is a little bit stronger, so it takes a little bit more filing, but it's quite easy to file either of these products that I have on my hands here right now with a nail file. It files up quite beautifully, as a matter of fact. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, just with my favorite sponge, I'm just finishing it up. And now I'm gonna dust them off. I'm just gonna let you take a look. We're gonna take a nice picture, a reveal of the two different colors here. Take a look. Beautiful. 
Now, like I say, they're two different colors, but they perform beautifully. Each of these nails looks absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm just going to polish them up, actually. I'm gonna actually wipe all the dust away too. A little bit of alcohol and just get rid of all the dust. I'm gonna just polish these up and then get a final look with all of them together. Polishing these glides on is no different than the other. Once you sculpt and shape it the way you want, you're polishing on a perfectly smooth surface. It's just gliding on. Looks great. Okay, so I'm just going to actually before the reveal shots, I'm going to polish up the other fingers. They got a little scuffed up for the nice, beautiful, polished off finished final photos. You wouldn't be able to notice the difference between I've got poly gel on the other fingers, some acrylic on the other fingers, and all of them are gonna look like they're all in harmony with each other, even though one's a hybrid, one's a acrylic, and one's a gel. Check out the reveal shots. Well, they turned out beautiful. And on that note, I have a couple of questions. If you've got a few minutes, I'm just gonna answer two. Lioness says, nails are beautiful. I do have a question. Does the poly gel nails bend after they're done and being worn? If your nails are bending after they're being worn or done, completed, they haven't cured properly if they're a poly gel or hybrid gel or a gel nail, or even if they're acrylic, they're not cured properly. Something is wrong. And if they're bending, I would say it might be a light issue but I would check into that. They shouldn't be doing that. And I have another great question from Sonia. Do you need to be a pro to buy a drill? No, you can buy lots of great drills. In fact, I've done several reviews on them. If Cameraman can put a little card there for you, you can check that video out. I did one specifically where I reviewed four that I purchased off of Amazon and Cameraman bought them, so he didn't even need a license to do that. There's quite a few good drills out there. Yeah, that's a great question. I will say, you do need to have some experience though before you start doing people. So you don't have to be a pro to buy a drill, but you need, you do need to have some experience to use a drill. So practice on fake fingers, practice on yourself before you start working on people. I highly recommend that, okay? Great question. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this video with the hybrid and the comparison with the Builder Gel Nail. I had a lot of good times doing that. It, was, it turned out absolutely beautiful. Well, thanks for joining me, you guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.